she got class. Uh, yeah, yeah. And vice yeah. versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good to overlap. It kind yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, they complement each other in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's that? You reckon? Just. Um, well, from my own personal experience, I find. Uh, so you wake up in the morning, you've had, you know, six to eight hours in a pretty still position. So your body's yeah. a little bit stiff. Yeah. So yoga opens up the, the muscles, opens up your joints. Yeah. Uh, and then once these um, joints and muscles are feeling a little more limber, a little more open, uh, Qigong energizes the, uh, the pathways along these, um, these joints and muscles. So you've mm. got like meridians, like in Chinese medicine. Mm. Uh, so it's kind of like um, you're clearing a path. And then you're flowing water through that path. Mm, or you're mm, mm, mm. taking something, traveling down that path. So you yeah, have, yeah. yeah, clear room. Yeah. yeah. Dan Anthony, man. How's it going? <laughs> Thanks for coming through, bro. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, oh, time. man. It's, um, yeah, Dan's one of the, uh, the OGs of my podcast. It was there uh, when I was just a thought. Mm. Mm. And um, Dan will tell you it was just a fucking camera and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little microphone. And we've come, know. we've come far, man. We've come far. And um, but um, for those, I guess I'll just reintroduce uh, Dan's. Uh, it's probably not a one word for you, man. But uh, he's uh, he's got a whole bunch of different facets of uh, his life. It was made up of life. Um, you know, I've learned uh, Chi Gung from him, which was a massive eye-opener, uh, which we'll get into, and there's a lot of things we want to get into. Um, but he practices yoga as well, um, and uh, he's one of the most spiritual blokes you guys will ever meet, um, you know, and, um, and um, you know, uh, takes, takes real pride and passion in what you do as well, um, transforming people. Um, but, yeah, we were just, I guess, talking a little bit about how Qigong and yoga has been. Um, so yeah, let's, man, what have you been up to? Like, uh, obviously, you know, I keep a close eye on what you, what you do and stuff and obviously doing fire shows now too, which we'll get into. We never really, I think when we originally did our first podcast, I don't know if you were, in, you were doing it at that point. Maybe you were getting into it. I'm not really sure. It was some time ago. It would have been like two years ago or something mm-hmm. when we first did it. But, um, yeah, man, what's been happening, man? Talk to me. Uh, so yeah, I've been really diving deeper into the practices, um, mm. Qigong and yoga mainly. Mm. Um, these two, they're kind of, for me at least, a, a practice that covers a lot of areas. So like uh, almost a one size fits all. Uh, so yoga being more of a philosophy. So mm. when I did my yoga tra- te- teacher training a couple of years ago, before I did that, I just thought yoga was stretching. I was mm. like, oh yeah, people do yoga, that's stretching. It's, mm. a, fancy, it's a, a fancy word for stretching. Mm. Um, but when I learned more about it and I started teaching Qigong in yoga studios, uh, I discovered that yoga is made up of these eight different elements and it's uh, a way to kind of enhance the quality of life. Uh, so there's these different principles that make up uh, the philosophy of yoga and asana, which is the stretching, is just one of the eight, mm. uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so dabbling more in these kind of other areas, uh, and then as well as, uh, Qigong, of course, because, um, honestly, I feel it's, it's, it's something I hold really close to my heart. Uh, it's something that I've connected with, um, you know, without even planning to, and having a practice find you is really kind of, uh, inspiring to, to Mm. take it further. So yeah, building new practices, creating new sequences, um, discovering more about my body through movement, through mind-body connection, which I find is uh, the most most rewarding thing, you know, to discover new things about yourself uh, from yourself uh, rather than being told, you know, th- your body can do this or that. Discovering it for yourself. I find how do you go about that, man? How do you how do you how do you discover these new things yourself? So um, for a period of time in my life, I was leading my life through my mind where it was like i gotta make this i gotta do this i gotta do this and it was very kind of like mental um and then i remember through high school starting to shift and just feeling more uh and especially practicing qigong you really start to develop sensitivity to energy and you start to feel more uh particularly you just yourself you get to decide throughout the day oh i can feel my emotions shift this way or that way and i started to make decisions based on how i felt rather than what I thought. Mm. Um, And then through that, I developed a heightened sense of sensitivity to my own body. I discovered I could feel depth in my muscles. Like obviously you can just feel your muscles, but it became a lot 
deeper. Um, it kind of expanded that uh, level of sensitivity. And so when I was practicing any type of yoga or calisthenics or qigong, I'm always feeling my body as I'm doing it. I'm thinking, all right, what does this feel like? What does this feel like? And in that process, I feel new things. And then when mm. I feel new things, I'm like, oh, this is different. Uh, and it's kind of like opening a door and then venturing down a new path or entering a new room and discovering what's on the other side. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Like when you, when you sense those things and you sense those new, I guess, new things um, when you're practicing, what are some of the elements or some of those signals that you do get to know? Is it just something different to what you've always felt when you do do the um, when you do um, when you do the practice? So you know, for example, you know whether it's the same sequence that you do every every other day, but you do that same sequence, and then when you find out that you do it, you find something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's essentially a sense, a different sense that you get. Yeah, it's kind of looking at the same picture with like a different lens. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that lens being a different kind of sensation. So yeah. you go from more of a superficial sense yeah. uh, to a deeper sense. So yeah. uh, think of it like in a massage example, going from just light touch on the skin to like really deep tissue into mm -hmm. the muscles. And it's the same spot, but it, you, you feel more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some of the practices, they, they work best by repeating them daily mm. uh, and you're kind of energi energizing these pathways. And when you get really deep into it, you, you start to feel just really subtle energy in your body. Um, then energy can be felt in the air as well. So when I move my hands through the air, through Qigong, when I'm breathing deeply, uh, you can notice uh, it's almost like you're moving your hand through water in a, in a way. Mm. Um, so you have like a little bit of magnetism, a little bit of resistance, which is pretty cool uh, because mm. it, it just affirms the belief that we're not just physical beings. We're, we're more than that. We're energetic mm. beings. Um, we're multidimensional, so to speak. And there's people think you're talking shit when you tell them this the first time and you got to kind of convince oh, it to them or you know, <laughs> till they do it, right? Till they do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, they do it. yeah. Uh, usually I, I kind of just, uh, I plant seeds or I leave breadcrumbs and I just say, just connect with your breath, feel your breath, feel your body. Uh, and the rest kind of comes as a surprise, mm. you know, when, when everyone's ready, they, the, they get to experience it. I think you got to let yourself go a little bit as well. You know, yeah. um, I know with my first experience when we did it and, um like it was um man like like i said I, i've never been able to explain it in detail to people um and that's just me like because i just feel like it's one of those things that if someone did it if you could just talk about it forever yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. um but the one thing that i do tell them is that I just felt like I was levitating, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's the one word I always use is that I've, I was genuinely felt like I was levitating without levitating, you yeah, know, yeah. What I, physically. Well, who knows? Uh, yeah, well, who knows? <laughs> Fucking earth. Everyone's just watching me. Yeah, <laughs> Didn't yeah. say nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, and, um, and I felt like, I don't know, especially with, I guess, you know, um, I wouldn't say I'm an everyday meditator, but I do make it a point especially when I do feel like I'm off a little bit. Mm. I, I do I do take some time for myself. Um, and the, the, the difference I find, I mean, I know generally people talk about, I mean, it's very hard to not think about anything, right? Um, but with Chugung, I found I just kind of let everything, just whatever was in my mind, in my soul, or whatever was happening, my past, and... Um, and one of the things that I eliminated and I would say suppressed was my ego. Mm. Um, and I just felt like, you know, there was all these reasons and um, there was like, put it this way, man, uh, I took a year or I left work. <laughs> Like literally leading up, like uh, I was doing Qigong leading up to my fight, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you, you were a big part of uh, that success and how that fight went. And um, it wasn't even more than the gym. It was just me. Um, and then, man, I was in such a high. And, and then I was like, had to go back to this constant kind of every day that I've always just known. And I realized that, Nah, like that taught me that there's so much more out there. 
Mm -hmm. um, but it's not till I looked inside myself that I realized that there was so much out there waiting for me um, and that all the little, um, and it wasn't just Qigong that, that um, showed me that, it was that it was always there, mm. but I just, I just wasn't letting it out. You know, there was always something that's just stopping the, my train of thought or, but I always believe like what we're doing right now and everything that else that I'm doing with my brand, whatnot, and what I'm trying to achieve out of it, I've always believed it 10 years ago. Like when I was 19, 20, I thought about this whole idea of what I'm trying to do, but that really just like, you know, um, that's why I was interested to get your take on it. Cause you talk about opening up and that's what it really did. It just yeah, opened it yeah. up and then showed me like, whoa, like, you know, there's levels to this thing called life. You know what I mean? Yeah, and um, yeah. it really just depends on how much you allow yourself to just kind of gauge in on what's really going on. But one thing that really was bothering me was that it was everything else. But then this made me realize it was all on me. Um, and, you know, and then it's been this one, it was this one year full journey on my own and, and um, figuring things out. And, and, and it, that's really just really opened up and made me realize that um, you kind of, all the things that I thought, that the, the decisions that I made and the, the things that I dwelled on and, and decisions that I thought were detrimental to how I'm living now and it was all really irrelevant. And, uh, and that's kind of what I tell people was that, what it taught me was that everything that seemed relevant was actually irrelevant mm. to me. Um, it just was like, it didn't really matter. It was such a small little part of what my purpose and what I'm trying to achieve and what I believe I'm here to do kind of thing, you know? And, um, and it was crazy because after that, it's like, how do you, how can you turn around and go back, go back to what you think you knew, you know, it's, it's too hard. You, can, you yeah. can, exactly. And that's what it was. And I, I knew that if I did, um, I'm only going to end up one way, probably depressed and, 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 you know, back in this, this constant, um, rhythm of, you know, nowhere, you know, just going in circles, thinking I'm going somewhere, but really I'm not, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is what you did to me, by the way, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but now I will always, uh, it was, it was, and, it really opened my eyes and what I was interested to kind of get your um, thoughts on, especially now with obviously, we you know, everyone knows with COVID and whatnot and how that's kind of changed your practice and in terms of has it brought people to you and, and, and one of the questions I, I really wanted to ask you was as much as these things are of um, these practices and, and, and ways of being able to deal with, um, you know, whether it's your anxiety, um, you know, these roadblocks, these things that, that, that hold you and imprison you on, your, on the past um, decisions you've made and, and, you know, and all those things. Knowing that this exists, and yet I found that people still don't want to take that leap of faith to allow themselves to, to free themselves from those kind of situations and, and that, that pain and that, that torture that they put themselves through. So I guess question one is, have you, have you had people come to you? Um, has the whole situation with what we've been going through um, collectively um, in the world, uh, let alone, uh, you know, in your world, um, has that brought people to you and, and what has that been like in their experiences and why do you think it is that people are sometimes a bit hesitant to take that leap of faith knowing that these um, and not everyone knows that practices like qigong and but i mean you take yoga for example it's been around for a while now you know you know what i mean and yeah and yeah. sometimes you, you sound like a broken record telling people about it because you know and and i always tell them i'm like man like because then you just keep hearing them going on about the same things like, oh, man, yeah, I don't want to yeah. go to the gym. i got to just go there, you know. And I, and I tell them, I'm like, man, these things are there. They're not gimmicks, dude. Like, you got to, you know, you got to put yourself through it and allow yourself to be vulnerable and go through it in order to understand that it's life is way more, way more deeper than what you think it is. You know, yeah, you're just yeah. scratching the surface. So, um, yeah, like, why do you think that is? Um, that is, you know, that people do hesitate, but... Um, first of all, have you seen the increase in your practice and people come to you in this time, you know, in this time of need, really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, because, you know, obviously health is the number one priority and yeah. it's, it's something that's, it's, it doesn't have a final destination. There's always going to be ways that we are encouraged to improve our health. You know, life has 
many, many different circumstances and health is going to just be this never ending process. So mm-hmm. particularly when there's something, you know, amongst the world that's contributing to, to more fear, to, to panic, to stress, to anxiety, mm-hmm. um, pursuing health is going to be, you know, a number one priority. So I've found, I have had, um, people come to me, um, just to, to gain a deeper understanding of what they could do during this time, uh, how they could, you know, improve their own health, ben- get benefit from the practice, maybe even uh, explore something different. Um, so it's been very useful in, in that sense because, uh, like you said, it's been around for thousands of years mm. um, and for good reason because, like, obviously mm. it works. Mm. Um, but, yeah, until you experience it firsthand, it's very hard to put into words. It's kind mm. of like describing skydiving, you mm-hmm. know. Until you do it, you don't really know, like, oh, yeah, it's fun. Like, But, yeah, when you do it, you get yeah. to experience it firsthand. Um, but I think sometimes a lot of the hesitation to, to do things, um, I believe that we have two uh, ingrained fears into us. The, the fear of the unknown uh, and the fear of how powerful we are, mm-hmm. which uh, can dabble in you know, the, fear of un- be- of the fear of the unknown. Um, and because of that, there's that lack of certainty, like, oh, what if? Um, but there are you know, millions and trillions of what ifs. And it's kind of like, I, I like to use the analogy of your life uh, being like a garden. Mm-hmm. So you've got flowers and you've got weeds. Now, if you water the flowers, the flowers will grow. And if you water the weeds, the weeds will grow. Um, but if you only water the flowers and you remember to do the weeding, your garden will grow and it will be you know, very abundant. Um, and this is kind of like areas in our life. Our water, the water that we water our garden with is our attention. Energy follows uh, our focus, where we place our attention. And if it's in a realm of uncertainty and within that unknown, we focus our attention on the what ifs that are not favorable for us. They're kind of fear based beliefs that kind of deters people from taking a step forward because it can be an unconscious pattern where we are presented with a situation that is unknown. And rather than choosing to focus on watering flowers, we accidentally water weeds. Um, and it could be like a habit that we picked up when we were a kid and not even mm. know. Mm. Uh, so I feel like a lot of it is, is unconscious programming, um, you know, from a young age and just things we're not yet aware of. And for those that, I guess, do pick that up from a young age and then do tend to try it or do tend to follow through with it, what do you think is the difference between a person that is fearful of it? I mean end of the day a lot of people that uh that practice it or have ended up finding yoga or you know qigong or various other practices that uh, benefit them um not all of them have always you know have you know not all of them have grown up with no fear or had that same type of uh um kind of environment or life you know where they are afraid to make those decisions based on the fear factor right mm. so what do you think is the diff what do you think is the difference with someone being able to cross that line and do it is that just genuinely like is that just them in general like is it is it life it's click like it goes back to similar to what i was saying where um like I've always had elements in my life, things that, you know, call it signs or signals or um, energy that, that you, feel a, you feel some type of way. Yeah, when yeah. you think of something, when you see something, you feel it, right? That's what led me to it. You know, that's what led me into yoga and believing that, uh, believing in what it, what it does for you, the benefit of it. Mm. And just the fact that you don't realize how like clouded and how much weight you're putting on yourself when really you don't have to yeah yeah. um but i'm not the only one that feels like that i'm not the only one right so what what does it take someone to be able to cross that line and be able to put themselves in those vulnerable positions to be able to you know because there are still people here think when they think yoga, man, they just think like women, like, you know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's crazy, right? It, yeah. It actually yeah. Is like, you know, it's just like, I'm like, dude, like, and it just blows my mind, but you got to remember people are in different stages in their life and know, you know, it's like, they may, they may know something more than you do kind of thing. But the fact that, that that level of thinking is still there that they just, they just think it's like moms or whatever, like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, in a yeah. yoga studio, like, the the masculinity 
connecting that with yoga just for some people doesn't connect but i'm like dude it's it's like it's got nothing to do with that yeah you know? well, well it's all about balance um but yeah i find um for people wanting to to make change change happens outside your comfort zone uh, and change is part of the unknown as well um and what i've found is most people will move towards things that give them pleasure and mm. move away from things that give them pain. Mm. So if they're in a situation where something is creating suffering or pain for them, but they're still making those choices in that direction, they're getting something out of it that's still giving them pleasure. Mm. Um, you know, it could be, say, for example, um, smoking. It might help calm their nerves uh, more so than the effects it has on their body or their lungs up until the point where perhaps it does start to take a serious toll on their health and then the pain factor becomes more than the pleasure factor then they start to move away from that mm -hmm. um, and in terms of trying a new practice it uh, can come from uh, you know a very similar thing if it's if they have a predisposed uh, idea about it or a biased belief about it uh, without it actually experiencing it firsthand like say for example someone goes skydiving and was like mm -hmm yeah, it was the best. And someone was like, oh no, it wasn't good. And mm. you make your decisions based on someone else's opinion rather than uh, choosing for yourself and experiencing for yourself. You kind of have your, your life's choices made by other people. Uh, and it can happen a lot. And again, this is another unconscious thing where, you know, role models in our life, like our parents, teachers, mm. older siblings, older cousins, uh, a big one. even the stuff on the news, they can create opinions about situations we've yet to ever experience firsthand. And then they form the, the core beliefs about how we act in those situations or what we end up choosing. Mm. So it's a big influence. Massive influence. I mean, I, I know for a fact, especially like uh, parents and how you grow up and, you know, your culture and where you come from. It's just yeah. a it's just a constant dialogue that's been happening generation after generation. Right. It's almost like this is all you know this is what is normal to you this is the box this is the box this is yeah, yeah. and I, I mean it was like that for me for a long time and I, i'm sure it's like that for a lot of people as well mm. um till you realize that uh you know you there's so much more out there and there's so much more in within your capabilities and mm. and then even then you define of um obviously you grow up in especially like for example my culture there's only a handful of jobs that are seen as successful, right? Mm. Uh, you know, whether you're a doctor or an engineer, like, it, you know, it's a joke. It's, an, it's a joke within our culture, but it's the, it's the, it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, anything outside of that is seen as whatever, you know? Uh, but then it's also then being able to define what success means to you and feeling it as well. Um, yeah. and, it's, and, and that is something that I've learned to appreciate more so now than ever um i mean i've always always appreciated all the little things but now just you know the little little hustles that i do and uh but then the um the 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 happiness and then the uh the pleasure and and just the you know the all that, like the f the sense of accomplishment i get out of just doing something is mm. so much more higher than what i would imagine it would have been but it's not till i started doing it whether it's um you know whether it's a podcast whether it's doing some you know or some other video content or whatever it is right um like the other day i had to go do something in bondi and it was like you know from here to bondi <laughs> it's not an easy drive yeah, and, yeah. and i'm doing this on the basis on a future idea of what this is what i'm doing is going to build to be something that's that's going to be you know, not only bring success, but be something, right? Mm. But you got to start somewhere and, you know, and, that, and it's easy to go on that drive and back and edit it and put it out and then be like, man, I hope this, this flowers, you know, it comes into, you know, flowers into something special, right? Uh, it really becomes something. So, but then the feeling once it's done, I prior to thinking about doing it as opposed to have done it and then, and actually there in front of you, um, you know, appreciating that and knowing that, man, this is actually not easy to do, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and no one else is going to believe in it. If you, you know, if you don't believe in it, no one else is going to believe in it. 100%. Right. So, um, you were touching on, um, prior to, I guess, prior to we started, you're talking a little bit about consciousness and you're saying you kind of this new energy and, uh, and, uh, new consciousness and, you know, in a different place and you've learned so many new things. So touch a little bit about that, man, um, you know, where you're at and, kind of what what you've kind of seen and learned so far um since i guess you know we saw you last time yeah yeah 
um with consciousness is it's a huge topic yeah you know, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's infinite yeah yeah um but it's definitely always expanding um and in that expansion you get to learn more about yourself and who you are and who you feel yourself to be and who you choose to create yourself to be uh, i'm sure we've all questioned ourselves you know at one point in time like who am i like mm -hmm. like what am i doing here kind of thing yeah. and um you know it's this famous question <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, we spend time you know pondering it and thinking about it and then we start to learn um you know more about ourselves more about our place in the world what feels right what doesn't feel right um i find like um the the biggest kind of indicator for the things that we should be doing or that are in alignment are the things that feel good you know mm. when you're in alignment your soul kind of gives you that confirmation through a feeling uh and that's like your compass uh and then things that are out of alignment they don't always feel so good and mm. it's it's you know a really uh easy navigational tool just to base things off you know how you feel uh so when it comes to consciousness and and making decisions based on how i feel uh and the way in which i perceive the world and world and how I perceive myself and learning that a lot of my experience uh, actually comes from the perspective that I have on the world. So mm -hmm. perspective on any situation you can have, you know, say, for example, say this photo, you know, this picture, same picture, 20 different people can mm -hmm. see it mm -hmm. and have different opinion about it, a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, each perspective is going to be unique and true to the individual but it doesn't discount another's. It just mm. means that it's different through their eyes. Uh, but the universal truth is, it, it's just, it is what it is. You know? <laughs> there, it's, it's got this neutral effect and reality is very similar to that. It has this neutral effect, but the definitions we give to situations, to experiences, the perspective we place on uh, situations, experiences, will define what we experience out of it. It's kind of like, um, I really like this analogy. If you want to get the most out of life, uh, you need to have kind of the highest perspective on situations to always see the silver lining. So say, for example, I have a car and I want the car to perform at its best. I want it to drive, you know, perfect. So I look at the engine and to improve the engine, I optimize the engine, right? Now, if I want my perspective to perform at its best, I will optimize my perspective, therefore optimism. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can maintain you know the highest levels of optimism in any situation we become greater than our circumstances greater than our environment and we literally choose our experience based on the perspective that we place on on anything and if you continue to maintain this nothing will phase you everything is joyful everything is fun mm. everything is pleasant mm. um, but it takes practice it takes a lot of repetition um and there's always going to be times where you feel like you've fallen off track kind of thing but it's always going to be back to a perspective like do i feel like i've fallen off track or wait actually no this is helping me develop a, a greater sense or a greater strength towards my perspective so it's always going to come back to that yeah and i guess the key word there is just um is to continuously maintaining and doing that right yeah yeah um because that's something that um me and Rick were talking about the other day and we we're just saying and we talk about doing Qigong we're like man it's been a minute when we all got together and done it and and then I said it's funny I said to him it's funny yeah you think uh I said you do a couple you do it a couple of times and and you know you learn all these experiences and you know you, you're so um uh, so aligned with yourself right and you think yeah like you know I know this now <laughs> and then, yeah. you know then six months from now you're like fuck where is that a lot you know where is that yeah, alignment yeah, and yeah. you just all of a sudden you could you could veer off mm. um and not not to your discredit it's just that's life right it's always going to be challenging so many different things are happening and you can kind of veer off and and I said to him it's funny because it's one of those things it's gotta you gotta always be able to practice it because and there's nothing wrong with that it's like anything right consistency repetition yeah is yeah. the key to it a lot of uh, a lot of things that are that um that represent success you know so um and it's it's uh and it's funny because uh you know we're, we're having that conversation it's, and it's perfectly um it's perfect as to what you were just saying because it is true like you you can't just you know you can't just um like anything right you have a really good day playing sport whatever sport you play it's not going to just happen next week man you might go on a real bad rut you know what i mean but the thing is you turn up to training and um and it's funny you said that because 
my experience is very similar like you know um, and you would know and a lot of people would know when you when you're training and you're competing for something uh, there are days you're dragging yourself into the gym and you know and um, and um, you know and for the lack of a better term you're feeling like shit you know what I mean but you put you know you turn it up that's number one that's the key thing mm. to turn up but I remember our, um, and this was a practice we did in um, in Castle Hill what we did in the park and I remember, and that was the day I said, I felt like, man, I was just levitating on, on air. Like, I was just felt like, you know, and I remember I had a big smile on my face, as does everyone that ever does it, I've noticed. <laughs> no, no one ever, no, no, never has a smile, or not ever has a smile, sorry. Just, um, and, and then I remember the f driving home, and the first thing that came to my head was, man, like, that reassurance that i was doing everything that i should be doing mm. and that i'm okay and that i'm 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 hitting my target and i'm i'm and and that i'm doing everything that i should be doing mm. and that hey dude don't stress like you're actually all right like everything's all right yeah yeah you know and and you're putting in work and you're going to get the results and you're doing what you're meant to be doing like because like anything, right, you can build up anxiety and then you can have, you, anxiety can creep, creep into whether it's training or anything and you start to question, am I doing enough? Should I be doing more? And, but this allowed me to, to really just slow everything down and, mm. um, uh, and really just be like, man, you're doing what's asked of you and that's all you can kind of do, you know? And that made me feel great. And that's when I was like, yeah, you know, I'm ready. Like that's, I, I felt like at that point I was ready. Um, I felt like I was ready to go and I was in a good place and and it wasn't just with training but it was just in general in life like yeah, I was yeah. I had been doing it you know because like you said people that choose to go through the pain they get something out of it you know what I mean and that's what I realized all these things that I thought were wearing me down I was trying to do this trying to do that it was actually teaching me things yes. that I just didn't pay attention to. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I never paid attention to it, but it, it was actually teaching me that a lot about myself, um, mm. whether it was resilience, whether it was um, like my wife always says, you know, when you, when you like, got your heart set on something, you're so fucking stubborn. Like you will make it a point to get it done, you know, yeah, yeah. but I never see things like that. You know, I just always see it as an obstacle, but I never, saw, I never appreciated that 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 resilience factor and that 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 want and that need to 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 reach that goal or whatever it is but it's something that's got to that i, I got to really want mm. but i never appreciated that factor but I, i've learned to understand about that about myself and and uh, even though a lot of people around me saw that in me it's not to like i accepted it and thought man that's who I am. If I want something, if I really want, I will do what it takes. And it might be painful, but I'll, you know what I mean? I'll, that that the, the the stubborn, drive. yeah, which is the drive in me will always push me to, to try to get it done. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and I had to look back and then look at all those things, you know. And sometimes, I, you know, um, you kind of try to measure, well, have I really done, you know? And then, you know, it's not till the closest people that know you, um, and you know even my wife turn around and say look at all these things you've done in your life like achieved in your life and yeah, you yeah. know and it's just like it didn't seem that way to me uh mm. but then now i appreciate it you know i'm like shit yeah because not every time dick and harry can do that you know what i mean and yeah, um yeah. and and so that's kind of allowed me to to not only just the appreciation factor but at the same time know that man, I can achieve these things that are bugging me right now in my head, mm. telling me, dude, like, you know, screaming, saying, this is what you should be doing. This is what is, you know, the path you should take. And this is what, you know, and, um, and it's always been there. And, and that's been the battle. And I felt like it used to physically and detrimentally affect me, um, you know, my mood. And, and, and I thought it was just, you know, just these outside factors mm. you know that were impacting me whether it's uh relationships or 
or decisions to you know that you make um, based on the relationships you have with people um, and whatever it is but really what was really bugging me was that I wasn't doing what I felt I should be doing with my life yeah that's yeah. really what it was more that's than kind anything of like your soul knocking on the door yeah like, hey you know like yeah pay attention pay attention yeah mm. and that's really like what woke me up and I realized man and when I started to chase what is it that's really driving me you know this sense of uh being and this sense of um existence and and what i feel like i have to offer in my lifetime everything else just like falls together fucking disappeared man like mm-hmm. the, the noise the everything just disappeared and um and and it was crazy because i realized that and i told people like everything that is eating you up it's all here and all here. You just got to figure out what it is is in here. And when you find that, and no one ever finds a finance, and, you know, life is such a continuous journey, right? Like yeah. you yourself, you know, sitting in front of me now, as opposed to two years, you probably so much has happened, right? And that's just bit... I grew a beard. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, fuck it up. You did too, yeah. <laughs> just this year. No, yeah. this isn't two years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I'm just, I just remember you didn't have a beer the, the yeah. last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, in, but then when you find that motivating factor, I feel like, you know, it's like, it just starts to open those doors. And I always say, instead of trying to go from door one to door 10, figure out how to get to door two. When you get to door two, you'll figure out how to get to door three, you yeah, know, and yeah. it's just those baby steps. And that's how I kind of deal with things now is, okay, what do I need to do next? Mm-hmm. What do I need to do next? And before you know it, that that one year goal that you had or the six months or that thing that took eight months, or you thinking, man, it's gonna take a while for me to get there. Before you know it, it's in the you know the line you know line uh, in your within your eyesight and within within your peripheral, you can see it. It's there, you know. And um, and it was all just it wasn't um, anything special. It wasn't magic. It was just, a, I had to switch a little thing, uh, my train of thought and my perspective and mm. what I, you know, what, how I um, carried myself and really just dive deep, you know, pull the skeletons out of the closet. As I told people, you just got to sometimes face your fears, man, and, and really just address what's really bugging you, you mm. know, because otherwise I just feel like there's no life in you. You might think there's life when you're going out, having a good time, whatever, but if, I feel like if you don't figure that out, there's no life in you, you know? You're just, yeah, you're yeah. living senselessly for what, you know? And it's just gonna become a painful experience, you know? Mm. Um, and then you end up masking it and then filtering it and it's there, but you're just ignoring it, you know? And then it comes out at different times, at different moments in a very unhealthy way. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to happen, 100%. you know? One of the um, the biggest things I've learned um, in in the in the process of expanding consciousness and kind of removing or filtering through the layers that um, aren't in your best interest, the the aspects of the self that aren't serving your highest good, and kind of in a in a sense the altered ego versus you know the true ego or the true self, you know your you, your your highest good, your highest alignment. Um, and in that digging process and when things start to surface, one of the things that I've learned to be most effective in order to process things, mm-hmm. um, because what I've used to approach this uh, practice with of inner work is to look at the source of things, mm-hmm. discover, okay, what caused this? Why is that there? Um, and kind of, you know, really uh, dissect it and, um, and try to solve it. Uh, but what I found to be most effective most recently in my, in, in my uh, inner work practice is just to feel, mm. like just to simply feel when things surface, not to ignore them, not to suppress them, not to try and mask them, just to feel them as if it was, you know, literally a cloud passing by. I'm just watching it and it comes up, you feel it, you experience that feeling, you, you know, get a chance to connect with it because it's, it's an aspect of yourself, um, this feeling and then it passes and then it's gone and then sometimes there is no need to to look at why it was there mm. or or the, or the source of it or to solve anything it's just to simply feel it mm. it's it's like uh when they say that uh you know your gut and that feeling in your stomach you're right it's 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 way more deeper than that like yeah, you yeah. know that when you do and that's that's exactly it sometimes they say you know you get that feeling in your gut like 
you're feeling it for a reason yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what 100%. i mean uh, it's not just happening for whatever sake there's i feel like a lot of these things they just uh the universe is talking to you but it's also subconsciously you're putting that energy out because that's who, how you really feel like yeah. it's how you really feel and then it's how you think you really feel yeah you yeah. know um and i felt like my whole like especially in the last you know 10 15 years there was that how i how i really felt which was like i felt like my true sense of being mm. and then how i think i really felt you know yeah, what i yeah, mean yeah. and uh, i had to kind of you know i had filter to it. filter it and get yeah, to the yeah. yeah get to get to that part you know and and start and more than anything i think goes for anybody just man start respecting yourself start mm. respecting who you are and and loving yourself i think it all starts with that too you know i think uh, carrying that burden and that pain it, it 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 blocks you from being able to fulfill your potential you know and what's your potential i don't know whether you fulfill it i don't know but i think infinite it, yeah well that's it goes back to what you're saying infinite it's just it's just that journey go mm. on that journey because then you'll never be bored right it's always yeah, it, yeah. you know that's it's, creation yeah right yeah. it's always if it's not this it's something else you know and and then and then when you think one door closes another opens it you know and before you know it, you look back and you can write a storybook about your life by the time you know it's mm. your time to go so um how's um um in terms of like have you other than your practice have you like do people kind of come to you to to have these conversations outside of practice and just yeah, kind of yeah. pick your brain or, and and how about yourself do you do you engage with people is there people that you go to that you feel like you can have these conversations with or you just tend to have with anyone that's kind of drawing you drawing you there to to be able to like similar to myself you know having these conversations but do people kind of come outside of the practice and be like hey dan like because with the practice i feel like as much as we're all there together you're on your own you know mm. you're going through your own little journey yeah, right yeah. <laughs> you know especially when you open your eyes you're like oh fuck <laughs> it's like it's like there's like six seven people here yeah, yeah. you're like fuck i totally at one point i totally forgot that these people were even here you know yeah. but i feel like with that comes it sometimes questions and answers right so do you find people come to you to kind of dive deeper into it to kind of make sense of how they're feeling yeah yeah totally yeah. um so as a personal trainer um remedial massage therapist and then yoga teacher and qigong instructor all of these practices have you know open doors to more than just the physical practice or you know the healing aspect of it there's there's more to it um and i am a big believer that consciousness contributes to to everything mm. so the the results you get in the gym it comes back to the mindset it comes back to your perspective how your body is showing you symptoms is an aspect of the mind what you think about throughout the day what you feel about what those thoughts are throughout the day uh, and then it manifests physically and mm. one of the best ways to address these um, these areas is to take a look at your consciousness take mm. a look at how you perceive the world um, so in my own experience and obviously sharing my experience with others um being a you know a personal trainer it's my job to to motivate someone and to show them how they can motivate themselves to to highlight the areas uh in their personal development that can be improved or can be enhanced mm. and you know it always touches on the door of uh consciousness and how our thoughts are so much more powerful than we give them credit for mm. um there's uh, as an example there are these uh kind of the three um, aspects of manifestation or creating our reality um, through my understanding of consciousness our thoughts create our reality uh, the conversations the mental conversations we have in our head they contribute to the to this creation so we have a thought we have an idea about something and then we feel a certain way about it we might think oh you know what i want to you know uh, paint a picture or i want to you know do a podcast or i want to write a new program and then it turns from that thought into word word is the you know the first uh physical manifestation of that thought whether it's spoken word or written word and then we take action on that word 
um, and that action is like the rocket fuel to, to bring into motion the, um, the manifestation of, of that idea, which once started off as a thought, which started off as nothing. Mm. Um, and then you can apply this in all different areas of your life. Um, the thought can be, say, the kindling. Uh, the word can be the, um, the, the fuel. And then the action can be the spark. And then you ignite the flame. Uh, and then it starts to burn. It starts to grow. It starts to expand. Um, you can do this, yeah, literally with anything. Yeah, and it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. What do you think about just in general with what's going on right now in the world? Um, just with obviously with COVID and and all the different aspects, it's it's kind of uh, impacted uh, you know humanity in in uh, such a negative way, but. Also, again, it's how you take it. A hundred percent. Right? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Um, like, oh, I've had, a, like, a great time, man. I ain't going to lie. Like, you know, mm. like, minus, obviously, the people impacted by it, um, with all seriousness. But it's, for me, I almost feel like uh, this is a very, 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 very deep, 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 thing going on right now in terms of uh how it impacts our train of thought um, mm. our spirituality our consciousness our sense of what what we thought we know and what we thought is life and i just feel like it's gonna it's a big slap to all of that because i felt like and this is just my opinion um it's really taught us a lesson mm. uh, i think as humanity we've got a bit stagnant mm. uh we've got a bit lazy in the way we i felt we carry ourselves mm. um and i think that we've got a bit selfish um and and none none to do with just because we wanted to i just think that as life progressed that's just what's happened and we forgot the basic principles of what makes us humane. Mm. Um, and I think with this coming along, um, or with, you know, COVID and, you know, going outside of everyone's theories of, you know, why, you know, going outside of all of that, I just think that it's almost like a, it almost seems like a, for, give a second chance or a bit of a, a reset to, to, to how we should, should, um, see life and have a perspective of life and what's important and what's yeah, you know yeah. what we thought was important um and i just feel like there's so much benefit from this as well mm. um you know just for us to really move in a, a different direction not singular but collectively as yeah, well yeah 100 uh, but i'm interested to get your thoughts because I know for a fact, man, you 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 would have oof, you would have had a field day thinking that you know, like seeing what's going on and 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 seeing how people are dealing with it and just the energy that it's brought globally. Mm. Um, so I'm really keen to get your thoughts on it and just what you see and what you see from it right now and where do you kind of see us or you think see us moving moving forward as well um, yeah yeah you know, yeah well i definitely think that um circumstances uh will always you know have some sort of impact in our lives by presenting different opportunities and yeah. different choices but greater than the circumstances is our state of being or our response to these circumstances so uh, rather than you know reacting or adopting another person's belief about it and experience to to choose our own to choose how we ch how we would like to respond how we would like to act in accordance with what's going around uh, is kind of been the greatest opportunity because it lets you really take a look at yourself and decide are your decisions going to come from fear based beliefs or love based beliefs and to question things um, to question you know, what's being presented to you as, as information, what's being presented to you as truth. Um, I find that it's been a really good opportunity um, to help people connect the dots. And like you said, to, to make the decision is what's, what's value to them in their life? What do they place, you know, close to their hearts? Um, I remember when um, 
all the gyms closed. You know, mm. that was a really big hit for a lot of people. <laughs> um, and a lot of people took it for granted, you know. Uh, a lot of people didn't, obviously, but that's just one of many, many examples where it just shows you when uh, you have these things available to you, what can you use? Um, it's like when people say, bro, I'm paying for gym memberships and I don't even go. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's, I know so many people like that, man. Yeah. You know, that uh, got gym memberships and it just, you know, it's just like, you know, yeah, it's paying off. It's but... more hassle to, you know, cancel your, your membership than <laughs> yeah, it is to, to use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, and where do you think and how do you think that this is going to impact us? Or, where do you see the benefits of it? I mean, other than obviously you touched on, do you think that it's going to, it's more the appreciation value of, 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 I guess, not taking things for granted? Mm. Um, yeah, I definitely think um, it, it's going to highlight um, what we do appreciate and not to take things for granted, um, but also give people the opportunity to choose, you know, what they want to do uh, in life because, mm. A lot of jobs were lost. Um, a lot of employers, employees um, weren't able to continue working. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I found was when, uh, you know, in, in my uh, circle of friends and the people that I observed, the people that I spoke with, having all that spare time when, you know, you weren't able to go to work allowed people to actually spend their time doing what they did enjoy. And then it gave them their contrast of what they spend their time doing for work and then what they spend their time actually doing things that they enjoyed. Mm. And with that contrast, I, I, I feel that it's, it's given people that, um, that understanding uh, about themselves, about how they do want to spend their time. So moving forward, I feel that people will be able to make more informed choices based on how uh, what they do makes them feel throughout the day. Uh, and then living their life based on, you know, what brings them joy. Mm. And I've noticed um, for those that would want to follow you and see what you're up to, you've been starting to put little practices, uh, little breathing techniques and whatnot, um, which was another big thing before we kind of ended was... Um, Like when we did that sequences, man, you physically taught me every time, like that I got a sense of anxiety. Like the funniest is my, my wife; she'll see me there doing, you know, you know, when we kind of like the the, the 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 one part of the sequence where almost like we're hyperventilating. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. She'll see me doing. It. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I said, "You have no idea. I'm yeah. gonna feel great after this, yeah, and yeah. you're gonna be happy because I feel great." <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, and she always sees me do it, and I said to her, "I'm like, I go, we are way more of a deeper being than you think we are. Like, and the, the our breathing is just the foundation to." everything that we Kid do life, yeah. you know and i said i remember ever since then when i was at work and i felt like there's a lot of work or or whatever it is and i felt like my heart rate started to go up a little bit and i'd go away uh, literally i'd walk away to the breakout room i'd look out the window and i would practice it and come back and like what seemed like a fucking problem waiting to happen wasn't even a problem anymore yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. i just lowered my heart rate and and, 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 and dealt with these little anxious moments. And I think that's what people don't realize is that it, these things are never going to stop it, but it's just good tools and understanding to have of yourself to learn how to handle it. Yeah. And I think that's the key is that it's not, it's nothing in life is ever going to completely wipe out um, or can wipe them out. But if you have a sense of understanding for it, you'll know how to deal with it. Like you said, like uh, that, you know, you said you could veer off and then you could be, uh, you could be thinking something negative and, and you're like, well, is it really negative? Yeah, yeah. You know, that thought and idea alone is just going to make you switch the, your train of thought and, and understanding and, and, and perspective on that little, whatever subject matter it is or whatever it is that you're dealing with, right? Um, but talking, yeah, so for those that kind of, um, or well, for those that do want to see what you're about, which I suggest every single person that's going to watch this or, um, you know, support uh, my platform should, um, tell a little bit about what you're doing right now with your little video clips and, and with your content that you've been putting out now. Yeah, so um, the main thing I've been focusing on is Qigong, consciousness and breathwork. So, mm -hmm. 
Um, they all tie in together. One thing Qigong has taught me is the power of the breath. Um, we can only ever breathe in the present moment. Um, and, you know, it's an age old teaching always, you know, stay present. Don't think too much about the past. Don't think too much about the future. The more you can stay present, the more you can stay in the moment and enjoy life because mm. all we have is the present moment, the, the eternal moment of now, you know, now it's now, now it's now, now it's now. Um, and through the breath, we can access this because when we are breathing, it's both a conscious and a subconscious or unconscious action. Mm. And what I learned through Qigong is when we consciously breathe, it's almost as if we bridge that gap in the mind between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind mm. and then combine that with movement we enhance that powerful effect into the movement and into our everyday life and developing that builds a habit of mindfulness that begins to branch out beyond the practice into mm. other areas of our life and the more mindful we can become the more we can observe how we perceive situations our thoughts and opinions about you know different uh, things throughout the day and then we can calibrate from there because without being able to recognize the things that we're doing, there's not much we can do to change them because we're unaware of it. Uh, so with the content I'm releasing now, it's really focusing on um, the different sequences that we can do in different time periods. So for example, there's a video up now, we're in a Mercury retrograde. So I believe that uh, the stars, the planets, uh, they're all part of nature. They're not separate to nature. Mm. You know, the sun and the moon create the, the, the night and day. Mm. Um, so it's an extension of nature and when the seasons change and we change with the seasons, the same thing can happen with the planets mm. uh, and typically in a Mercury retrograde, uh, it can be a little bit of a chaotic period. It can mm. uh, really bring stuff up to the surface internally, uh, but it's a great opportunity for us to slow down because the retrograde, what it looks like in the sky is the planetary path looks like it's going backwards, but mm. it's just our perspective from Earth. Mm. And by taking the time to slow down and um, to, you know, reevaluate uh, the stuff that we're doing uh, can really help us make more informed choices or, you know, change our pace so that we're not so rushed. And, and the, the sequence I created uh, just recently um, builds upon that. So I really like the analogy of life being very similar to a bow and arrow. So when you think you're being pulled back, it's not that you're being pulled back it's that you're actually getting ready to be launched forward mm. um and a lot of situations can happen like that in life we feel like oh like i've been making so much progress but then things feel like they've become stagnant but it's actually just you getting ready for the next mm. step in your life uh and then dabbling on breath work and consciousness as a way to become more present throughout the day in a in a practice or you know just on our own as a way to handle anxieties to handle situations um, to, to adapt, uh, and then different ways in which we can apply. So I've coined the term, I haven't heard it anywhere else. So, you know, I, I firmly believe, you know, we have our six senses, you know, sight, taste, uh, smell, touch, sound, uh, and then intuition as the sixth sense. Um, but I believe we have a seventh sense, which is mind bending. Mm. Uh, what I believe mind bending to be is to change our perspective, to change or to bend the mind, to view a situation in a different way. Mm. Um, and to use this analogy with consciousness and to teach people how we can shift our perspective using our imagination literally that easy, easily, we can change our interpretation of events and then change our experience of that interpretation of events. Mm. Uh, and then through that, we get more out of life because we are experiencing things through the highest perspective, through an optimized perspective. Mm. Yeah, man. People must have a field day talking to you. <laughs> <Sitting there. laughs> oh, I get deep pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I'm the same, brother. That, that's why yeah, we yeah. talk the same language. Um, I mean, I just think it's more important now than ever, man. Uh, I really do. And uh, I just can't uh, thank you enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll chat more off camera. But, you know, I, I've had to do my part to, to come back and... And... Uh, go through this practices again uh, you know um and i've been saying it but i do uh, i i really do i think uh instead of fi finding it when things aren't too good i think i'm in a great place but there's so much more that i want to expand on with what i'm doing uh, where i am uh, mentally physically spiritually with my purpose and you know and be able to dive into it and you know, it, sound, it sounds, uh, I always tell people, it sounds all crazy when, you, when you're when you hearing it. Um, you know, you're thinking, what, how, how, how? But 
to anybody watching it's not till you do it do you understand that that there is you know it's almost scary how deep you can go and get a sense of understanding of your very existence and what you're capable of doing um mm. but um for those that want to find you get in touch with you um i know you're on instagram um new for you um is uh is one way and i think you also got your own uh personal one as well i think yeah yeah, yeah. so um personal one mainly do uh, a lot of my fire Flight performing there, performing uh, there yeah. underscore life of dan yeah uh and then my youtube channel um where i'm posting most of my consciousness yeah. and qigong uh, videos is Danzai. So Danzai, that's right. D A N Z A I. -A well, I'll put the details up anyway. But um, man, I appreciate you coming through, man. Um, I feel like if it's one every six months or once a year, we need to have this chat, you know. And uh, and I always, I'm always excited, man, just to see where we're at and and what are some of the experiences and you know your outlook, because I think um, every person can, every person can. Uh, benefit from it and get a sense of understanding and and really appreciate you know uh just what you do um you know and um man i, I hope i hope uh this keeps growing i know you know from where it was to where it is now and where it is now to where it will go and i just hope it keeps growing because it's uh, something special man it's something special uh, and i'm sure you know there's people out there doing it and whatnot but um yeah i really hope it, it grows grows to be something uh you know something special because um a guy that i follow um he's in the states his name's david Meltzer. check him out but um he's a like a kind of like a life personal coach but he also loses he uses a lot of um spirituality and spirit you know the, um a lot of that that state of uh thinking in his work in terms of uh, when he helps big corporate businesses or, or people or whatever it is. And um, one crazy thing about this guy um, is that he, you know, used, used to work for a, um, a sports agency, really successful, like lived, you know, lived that life, right? That we all grow up thinking that, you know, that's the life and went broke, bankrupt. And, um, then went on this mission of kind of helping people and whatnot and he speaks a lot about his you know his failures and and how he grew up though tapping into like how he was brought up his relationship with his father and all these things right being a catalyst to what drove him down that life yeah, and, yeah. right and now his goal is to collectively um connect one billion people consciously and um and and this guy, man, you would think like the people he rolls with, the level of where he's at in life. But from the other side of the world, he'll make it a point. Like he'll go, like when people say I'm busy, he goes, "That's not a good thing. You want to be free for people. You want to be available for people." Mm -hmm. He was one of the first guys in my life that I ever, I ever kind of uh, underst like understood what he was saying. But more than that saw him at the height of where he's at and still be able to message you like i would send him questions from here like he does he does um friday um every friday if you sign up on zoom for free he breaks through different aspects of of uh you know your state of mind and how you deal with people and he'll go into even a, like you know how you make calls how you talk to people and, and i remember i flicked him a question once and i said dave how do you how do you network with the people you do and I remember he sent me a message back and this guy's in America, bro. He's in like California, California. And he's like, he goes, frequency, my man, frequency. He goes, find your frequency, tap into it. And before you know it, you will, um, you will, you will get to where you're trying to go. And it's all vibration. And yeah, it's all vibration. And I always believed that. I always believed that, but, but, um, and I, and I felt like that's what was always happening when things were happening for me mm. i just didn't know how to make sense of it yeah, yeah. you know what to i mean dots yeah, yeah yeah and um and um yeah and he's brilliant man any 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 he taps into that in explaining how to be successful in what you're doing mm. as opposed to you know and it's a lot more of how you are and what you do as opposed to you know um 
you got a hundred thousand dollars gave marketing and you know what i mean yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of his success and a lot of what he's doing is coming off the back of self-being and state of mind and, yeah, uh, and yeah. i like that because like i connect to that i i feel like i and, and a lot of these things i felt like you know when you think oh yeah that makes sense or it's like it makes sense to you because it, re- it correlates with you mm. um so a lot of these things aren't things that someone's teaching that's new it's someone's making sense of it for me yeah yeah. that's yeah. all it is yeah, you know yeah, yeah. You're, you're not telling me something that oh i never knew this it's like i've always felt it but you're making sense of it now for me you know and that's really what it was and um and that's scary man once you connect those two dots it's it's endless it's endless in what's possible so um but listen man i appreciate you coming through man and um man i can't wait for, uh, wait to see where you go from it and uh, i'm sure we'll hear from you soon man and uh, you know see what uh, what crazy things you've been up